Hey guys, today we have the David Childress. He has explored almost a hundred countries in the world and today we're going to talk about how people of South India really went all over the world and this is a very interesting story. Welcome David. Let's... Thank you. I wanted to ask you specifically about this book, The Lost World of Cam. Seems to be getting a lot of great reviews and it's a, it's a very interesting book. It's I wrote it uh, a few years ago. It's one of my most recent books. Uh -huh. And it's a book I was really excited to write. Okay. And it was the culmination of, of many years of, of study and my travels. Uh -huh. it, you know, I've traveled a lot in, in India and across Asia and to Sri Lanka and Indonesia. Uh -huh. I've been into Thailand many times uh -huh. and to Cambodia and Laos. Uh -huh. And finally, I made a trip to Vietnam. Vietnam? Yes. Okay. And that is where I really started to learn about the Kham and the Kampa. And it really opened my eyes okay. to what was going on ultimately. Okay. And what I discovered, and, and what I write about in this book, and the, the subtitle is The Trans-Pacific Voyages of the Kampa. Trans-Pacific. Trans-Pacific. Voyage. Yeah. So I realized there that, first of all, that the Kham were these Shivite Hindu Buddhists. Oh. Yeah, they were... Was, they were followers of Hinduism H and Buddhism. And Buddhism, that's right. And they and called themselves the Shivites. They, yeah, and, the, and the, the Hinduism that they followed was a Shivite. Okay. Hinduism. In Vietnam. In Vietnam. Okay. And they, they were also in Cambodia too, and, and ultimately in Laos. In Laos. Yeah, and right. what I discovered with the Cam as I researched them, I, I really discovered them so much in, in Vietnam. Okay around Da Nang. The, the Cam were not ever in the very far north of Vietnam. Okay. They were from about central Vietnam to and the south. North of, to, all the way to the south, okay. to the Mekong Delta and all that. And the Cam were not the same as the Vietnamese, what, okay. what we call the Dai Viet. Okay. Uh, they are they're invaders. not today's Vietnamese. That's oh. right. Yeah, today's Vietnamese are almost all Dai Viet. What, okay. Yeah, they're from the north. Okay. They are really of a, a Chinese ancestry. Okay. They're very light skin, like the Chinese. Mm -hmm. They really are a, a sect of Chinese, just okay. as the Thai people okay. are this, pretty much the same. Okay. They are both were invaders coming from China uh -huh. to the south. Okay. And in both cases, what they did was they pushed out uh -huh. the Kham or Kampa people. Kham or Kampa, Kampa people. people. How did they look? How how would the Kham people, and there, there's still a residual of them today in Vietnam, but and you have them in Cambodia. Uh -huh. And so the word Cambodia also is, oh. comes from the word Cam. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And they are they are darker skinned people. Okay. Okay. Uh, and they are more like uh, the people of southern India. Okay. They uh, look like me. And they look like you. Okay. And they also Indonesians too. Okay. And uh, Cambodians okay. are also, uh, uh, but. But they have a more oriental look. Okay. They also have darker skin okay. than, than uh, say, the Vietnamese or the Thai. Okay. So those people, they were megalithic. Uh -huh. They also used the keystone cuts. Okay, they used the keystone those cuts. Those keystone cuts, which are these T-shaped uh -huh. cuts. Yeah. And you pour uh, the, the metal. metal clamps in right. it. Yeah. So when I went to the megalithic city uh, near Da Nang called uh -huh. Mi Son. Mi Son. Mi Son. And I, I talk about it here, and I show okay. pictures. Okay. There, uh, I was looking at the, the ruins of Mison, a fantastic place. Uh -huh. And there was basalt blocks perfectly cut okay. that were amazing to me. I could see how what they were doing was very high-tech and, okay. and megalithic. And then I saw the keystone cuts. Okay. And they were identical okay. to keystone cuts I had seen. At Tiwanaku okay. in Bolivia. Yeah. And other keystone cuts I'd seen in Peru at Oyante Tombo. Yeah. And you can see them in Cusco too. Yeah, you can see them in India too. A lot of temples have these keystone cuts. And like uh, I think Hampi has yeah, those Humpy keystone has cuts. Yeah. yeah. And you'll you'll see them in Cambodia too at right. uh, Angkor Wat. Okay. You will also see them at some temples in Egypt. Okay. And at a, a few places also in Greece and Turkey, these keystone cuts. Okay. 
Uh, you'll see them at Borobudur. Borobudur. In Java as in Java. well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so once I saw the keystone cuts, because, and keystone cuts are a very unusual way of putting Pieces giant together, megalithic right? blocks together. Yeah. yeah. And so the idea that different cultures in South America uh -huh. and in Vietnam uh -huh. and in India and uh -huh. in Java, uh -huh. also in Egypt, okay. that they are all using this same uh -huh. unusual a uh, keystone cut building technique, and you're going to only see them on usually you know megalithic buildings that are already very well made. Yeah. But then they have the keystone cuts, and they have molten metals poured into them. Okay. So you're looking at megalithic technology. Uh -huh. You're looking at metals technology, okay. melting metals, pouring molten metals. Okay. Uh, and these are megalithic structures. Okay. Uh, at that point, I realized, wow, the cam are also in South America. Okay. I mean, there's some trafficking going on there. Okay. So I began to research more and more of the CAM. Uh -huh. I realized that now there's really something here. And I had been in Cambodia myself uh -huh. twice before. Uh -huh. And I, I just thought, okay, what's going on here? Okay. I made some trips also to Java, to Bora Badur. Okay. There's also uh, another site in near Jogjakarta, which is where Borobudur is, okay. called Kandi Sukha. It's high in the Kandisuka, mountains. Yeah. And it's a very old, old Hindu temples. Okay. And there are keystone cuts there, and, and also the, the site looks like a Mayan temple. Okay. okay. And when I'd first seen pictures of it, I thought, oh, this must be a Mayan temple here. Okay. But no, it's in Java, in okay. Indonesia. Whoa, what was that about? So with the cam, I realized that, yeah, there are these Shivites that are worshipping Shiva. Uh -huh. There's many statues of Shiva there with the third eye. Third eye. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a common motif with the, the Kam and Kampa people. Okay. Uh, also, that Shiva, of course, is having the top knot. Yeah, he has and his hair, knot. yeah. And he's always depicted, even in Vietnam, this okay. way. Okay. And throughout Cambodia, okay. uh, those megalithic places. Also, I went to a site in northern Cambodia called Priya Beher. Mm -hmm. It's on top of a mountain, right on the border of Cambodia and Thailand. Okay. And it's very much like Machu Picchu. Okay. So that's where I realized that the Cam were these people that were traveling across the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And that even many of the Pacific Islands were being settled by the Cam. And that they were these... They were Hindus and Buddhists at the same time. Okay. And similar with Borobudur, they don't know who built Borobudur. No okay. one takes Some credit people. for it. Yeah. They historians say, oh, it was this dynasty, the Salandra dynasty. There were some Buddhists, and it must have been them who mm. built it. But so, no, no one says they built it. But here's also another Cam site. Originally, where did the Cam come from? Were they originally in Vietnam, or? No, I think they came. They came from India. I think from southern India. South India. South India, yes. Okay. And uh, what language do you think they spoke? Well, they they may well have spoken a Tamil language. Tamil I, language. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. I, I I don't know what language they would have spoken, but okay. uh, sure, may well have been that. Okay. Uh, so they start from South India, and they go Southeast Asia, which is. How, how do you think they went? Starting, well, I mean, they, of course, had Vimanas, but they were going using ships, really. Uh, okay. And so the land of Cam began in Sumatra. Sumatra? Yeah. Okay. So Sri Lanka was not land of Cam. Uh, okay. And it was more closer, of course, just part of India or whatever, Lanka, who knows. Okay, because they were joined together. And they were joined, Sumatra. yeah, the, okay. the bridge and everything. Okay. Yeah. Whatever the history there, it's okay. it's closer there. But Cam became a land that was uh, starting in Sumatra, included all of Indonesia, Java. It included Malaysia, okay. where Singapore is today, also uh, Thailand. Okay. But it was before the the Thai people moved down into mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. Cambodia, of course, okay. and uh, the southern half of Vietnam. Okay, it also included Borneo. I would say it also included the southern islands of the Philippines. Okay. And all this area was Cam, and it was in in Sanskrit they called it Suvarnabhumi. 
Suvarnabhumi, yeah, yeah the, the land of gold. The land of gold, yeah. yeah. And when you go even today to the Bangkok airport, it's called Suvarnabhumi Suvarnabhumi Airport, yeah. Right, right. The land of gold airport. And yeah. uh, there's, there's, as you go through the airport, there's a big uh, mural of Rama on his <laughs> yeah. his trying chariot. You, yeah. you see it, it's very nicely done. Okay. And uh, it's always nice to see that. So, yeah, the land of Cam was this uh, Hindu and then later Hindu Buddhist mm -hmm. area uh, that it, it encompassed a huge area. And okay. uh, so many uh, ports and islands. Okay. And so the Cam had a fleet of huge ships. Okay. Uh, so many ships. You think they were like extremely well developed? You think, or you oh, think very well developed and rich in gold. And there's a famous story of the Chinese coming down to some of the Kampa cities in southern Vietnam to, to loot them and they, they took so much gold and treasure. Okay. The Cam people had, okay. they had so much gold and treasure. Okay. okay. Uh, and they were, they, were, they were traveling from island to island. They were great navigators in the ocean. They could go to any Pacific island. Okay. They were the ones going to Tonga and Tahiti okay. and ultimately to, to Hawaii, to Marquesas. Uh -huh. Even to Easter Island, all of those oh, you islands. Oh, think the Cam people built the Easter Island? I believe now that the Cam people built Easter Island, what's on wow. Easter Island. And I believe that the statues on Easter Island are statues of Shiva. Okay, okay. When the statues on Easter Island, are, and they're huge, they're megalithic. Uh -huh. And they wanted them, they wanted to put them around the edge of the island. Uh -huh. And they wanted to put a, a top knot a top on knot that. Just like yeah, and, and it was a separate piece of stone, a red uh, volcanic stone, and it was a top knot mm -hmm. with that, and it's it's like a hat. But okay. but if you are a Sh Shivite and you know Shiva, mm -hmm. you know that that top That's knot Shiva. is Shiva, and right. it's symbolizing Shiva. Right. And it, I, I've been to Easter Island three times, and it wasn't really until I went to Vietnam. Okay. And started researching the camp that I realized, yeah, and, and the whole Shivite thing, mm -hmm. and I realized those statues are Shiva. So, yeah, I'm still okay, go ahead. so with the camp, we're coming across the Pacific as mm -hmm. as Hindu sailors, really, mm -hmm. and uh, later they were Buddhist, and, and we're talking going back to I think 1000 BC, okay. you know, and but but. Going up to around, the Cam Empire lasted until about 500 AD or okay. so. Okay. What happened in the, with the demise of Cam was a um, a civil war in Southeast Asia. Okay. Among Cam cities. Okay. And there was a city in Sumatra. Okay. Called Sri Jaya. Sri Javaya. Okay. Sri Vijaya. Sri Vijaya, yeah. yeah, that's it. And that, and they're, they know it was in Sumatra, they're still trying to find exactly where it was. Okay. That's a city that has been destroyed by tidal waves and earthquakes okay. and volcanoes. And in fact, it's in that area where just recently, in the last year, mm -hmm. uh, there was a tidal wave in oh, Indonesia. Really? And, yeah, and it hit city. that part of Sumatra. And okay. uh, yeah, and wiped it out. And that, that's the area where uh, Sri yeah, Vijaya was, yeah. yeah. But so there was a like a civil war, and the the camp began fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. They went to Vietnam. Okay. Uh, at that time, the the central power of the of the Cong was in southern Vietnam. Mm -hmm. There were two. There's some islands off of Vietnam too, called mm -hmm. the Cong Islands. Cong Islands. Yeah. They're still called Cong. But they're still called the Cong Islands today. Okay. And those islands are granite islands off of Da Nang, and they have very uh, nice beaches, but okay. not. Even today, not many people live there. Okay. But apparently what would happen, and what I say in my book, is that fleets of ships, every at certain times of the year, fleets of ships, also, also coming from China, okay. they, and they're coming from Java, and also I think from southern India, also uh -huh. from Orissa, and, uh -huh. and Kanarak, and places like that. Uh -huh. And they would meet at those Cam Islands. Okay. Huge fleets of ships. Uh -huh. Giant ships too. And, uh -huh. and then from there, they would head out into the Pacific because that was a very good place. Okay. Uh, going just south of the Philippines. Okay. And they would head out into the Pacific, uh -huh. and from there they would go to Micronesia to this fantastic place called Nan Vidal. 
Okay. In on Ponape Island mm -hmm. in Micronesia. Mm -hmm. But but beyond and then out into Tonga and Samoa and Tahiti and ultimately to Mexico and Central America and to Colombia and to Peru. So yeah. they make a major mark in Southeast Asia. They build these amazing megalithic sites, you know. Including Borobudur. Okay. And then what is the next really amazing stop they make? The next stops are going to be uh, Fiji, Fiji, where they're also megaliths. Okay. Then to Tonga, where Tonga. where you have a lot the number of pyramids. Okay. The the site outside of Easter Island that has the most megaliths and pyramids and unusual sites is Tonga. It's Tonga. And Tonga has megalithic uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. It has a giant stone arch, trip trill thon, mm -hmm. like Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. It has so, several pyramids. So in Tonga, they do build these amazing structures. They and did. Then they where did. do they go? From there, they would continue to the east, to Samoa, Samoa, and then to Tahiti. Tahiti. Also going to the Marquesas, which is a little bit farther north, but mm -hmm. but closer to Mexico. Okay. And then from there, they have to make that final big, you know, uh, journey to North America. To North America. Yeah, where they're landing in either California or in Baja California or in Mexico. Okay. Or or even farther south. So thank you so much, David. I'm a big fan of you and all this information that I'm hearing from you is just amazing. Thank you. It's been great talking to you, Praveen. I've I've enjoyed it very much.